Hey, I'm Morgan from finepoints.biz and today I have a list of 30 different clients that are perfect if you are starting your bookkeeping business. So I'm going to start into the list right away and then along the way I'll kind of sprinkle in some tips and tricks that may help you out as well. I kind of grouped the 30 plus business owners into little sections. So my first section is artists. So the first thing I thought of is Etsy sellers. So Etsy is a huge business now. There's tons of people on there that have created really profitable businesses through selling their things. And I feel like a lot of times artists have the stereotype of not pay, maybe paying as much attention to their finances because they're really focused on their craft. So maybe if you have a favorite Etsy seller, you can reach out to them and see if they need a bookkeeper or um, certain targeted businesses that you like on Etsy. Next we have graphic designers. So maybe they're a freelancer that is hired out um, to other businesses. Um, photographers, so I have a photographer client and that is a great business because I feel like there's a lot of um, like solopreneur photographers that would be really great to start out with because it's a pretty simple business structure. Craft sellers, so this kind of goes along with the Etsy one, but maybe if you went to a craft fair or something locally and you brought your bookkeeper business card and you just passed it out to like, there could be candle makers, there could be knitters, they could be doing sewing, um, painting, like pottery, any kind of crafts that people make that they have created their own business to sell, they might need a bookkeeper. All right, and then home bakers. So for example, I have a friend who started a cupcake business and she does cupcakes for local like birthday parties and stuff. So again, that's a simple business that would be easy to get into as a bookkeeper. All right, and so that is one of my tips. Think about the people around you, um, the people you come in contact all the time, and there's gonna be some more on the list. I think it's gotten more and more common for like maybe stay at home moms to start businesses because there's so many opportunities now for work and for side hustles. So think about your friends and family around you and your neighbors and um, who might need a bookkeeper. And one caveat, I haven't worked with every single one of these businesses, but, but I just tried to brainstorm a helpful list for you guys. So definitely leave me a comment down below if any of these you think are actually have more complicated books that I do not know about. And also leave a comment with any other ideas that you have that we can all learn from. All right, so my second section on this list is kind of the teacher realm. And of course, not the teachers who are employed by a school, but anyone who is tutoring or teaching that has formed their own business. So tutors is the first one I have, um, maybe like a piano teacher or a music teacher, um, maybe someone who teaches your family member or your kids piano. Um, you can approach them and see if they're having trouble like managing their books and if they need help. Maybe a yoga teacher, someone who started a yoga like business or teaches classes as a freelancer, as well as a personal trainer, that's similar. Um, art teachers, maybe someone like has a local painting class at your community center that you can reach out to and see if they need your services. Daycare providers, um, leave me a comment if there's anything special that I need to know about daycare providers, but I think that that would be pretty straightforward. They'd have money coming in and coming out for expenses. It might um, require a little bit, bit of like their space may be tax deductible. So you might have to work with that a little bit, but I think that would be very manageable as a beginning bookkeeper. As well as other coaches or consultants, maybe someone is consulting um, on, a, like they have a expertise in their consulting with other business owners, or they're coaching maybe like a career coach or someone who is helping other people do a skill. Preschool is the last one I have on my list. So, and this might be a little bit, there might be a little bit more skill involved in the bookkeeping, just especially if it's a nonprofit. Nonprofits have certain things that you have to do. They probably will have a board that is going to help you out and let you know any of the requirements for that nonprofit. And at the end of this video, I do have a list of, I think it's five businesses that you might want to avoid as a beginning bookkeeper, just because they do have a little bit of complexity that you might not be ready for quite yet. So my next tip in looking for clients when you're first starting out is think about how many employees they have. So if it's just a single solopreneur um, running their business, that's going to be a lot simpler than if they have multiple employees. So then you're going to have to deal with payroll and paying their people. If they hire contractors, that's going to be probably easier for you. So definitely as you're kind of vetting these new clients and you want someone pretty simple, um, think about employees. And I am a firm believer in the fact that you can figure things out as a bookkeeper. So don't just automatically discount someone because they have employees. You can definitely figure out payroll. They probably have a payroll company or you can help them set that up. Just think about that if that is something you want to spend time and effort working on. And then again, probably you can ha handle someone with one or two employees. And then as you get more, it's going to become more complicated. In a couple of resources I have, if you're just starting out, I have a free checklist on how to start your bookkeeping business. I have like a decision tree um, that like walks you through the steps that you need to know as you're learning how to be a bookkeeper. And then I do also offer a paid class that's right now $150 
um, that helps you, gives you three action steps each week on how to start your book review business. So all that stuff is going to be linked in the description box below. So my next grouping of great business owners is service providers. Um, and this is one of the largest on my list, the largest groups of people, because service providers are one of my favorite people to work for. A lot of these, like the teachers and the artists are kind of service providers as well. I mean, especially the teachers, but service for providers usually have pretty simple business structures. Um, they don't have inventory that you have to manage. They probably don't have a brick and mortar store, but it's probably just maybe a person or a person in their assistant working from home providing a service to others. All right, the first one is a wedding florist, similar to the photographer. This kind of could have gone in the art one as well, I guess. Yep, so they just work for different clients on weddings. Same with an event planner. That would be pretty similar, um, like workflow business. All right, dog walking. I personally don't know any dog walkers, but I feel like that's always on the list of like good businesses to start. Um, so if you know any dog walkers, reach out to them. They should have created a business entity and be paying taxes if they are like making money as a dog walker. Cleaning businesses. So, you know, someone who goes and, and is a housekeeper for different clients. Catering services. So maybe someone decided to start a catering business out of their home and works for different people. They would be a great person to do books for. Pet sitters, similar. Organizers, someone who goes and organizes someone's home. A handy person service, so someone who comes into your home or business and fixes your windows, maybe does some like carpentry or things like that. Someone who is an Airbnb host, that might be a great first bookkeeping job for you. Um, a financial planner as well. Someone who does electronics repair, maybe out of their home, people bring them um, you know, their broken computers or fans or whatever to fix, as well as I just thought a bike repair person or anything, anytime you're repairing things for other people, that would be a service provider, a massage therapist, um, and a moving service. All right, we're getting to the end of the 30, actually, I actually think I have 34 on my list. So the next group is online businesses. So there's such a big boom in the, like, like me, like YouTubers like, or people who are making money somehow online, like the virtual business model versus the brick and mortar store. So we have YouTubers, we have bloggers, freelance writers, social media managers, marketing freelancers. So anyone who, you know, they have a marketing background and they want to help other businesses market through social media. I think there's something called a social media manager as well. I'm not sure if that differs from a marketing manager. Virtual assistants. So right now I have a virtual assistant who I love and she sends me an invoice every month. So as a bookkeeper, you could keep track of all of the assist virtual assistants clients and send out their invoices and track the money as it came into the business. Podcasters. And then my last one is a copy editor or ghostwriter or anyone who is working with words for like someone's blog or for their website. I don't know if you guys know this. I used to be a copy editor. That was my first job out of college. I was a copy editor for the Target print ad. So the advertisement that comes in the newspaper, if I don't know, people still get that, but that was my first job. And I actually, before I started bookkeeping, I wanted to start a copy editing business or like a copywriting business. Um, but bookkeeping was way easier to market. A lot of more people wanted bookkeepers than they wanted to outsource their copy editing. All right, so I promised you at the end, I have five other businesses that are a little bit more complex. Not that this should scare you away totally from these businesses because you can make a lot more money in these niches. Um, and you know, if you specialize in one kind of bookkeeping, you get to know that really well. Um, that is something I would recommend actually. But if you're just starting out for your first or your second or your third client, you might want to avoid these more complicated industries. So the first one is construction. I personally have never done construction, but, or, you know, bookkeeping for the construction industry, but I know there's a whole, like, there's whole classes and whole schools of thought around construction. So I know it can be more complicated. The second one is attorneys. So that actually is a niche that I personally am working towards specializing in. So I'm learning more and more about trust accounts, client cost advances, all these specialized things that lawyers need to do in their books. And anyone in the medical field also tends to be a little bit more complicated when you're dealing with insurance. So I did work for a speech pathologist in the past and it was a great client. It was, it was just, it's just another added element to when you have to send things through um, insurance and medical billing. It's kind of like a specialty in, the, in and of itself. All right, and then the last ones are real estate, I've heard, can have some complexity. Restaurants can always also be challenging, I've heard. I know there's a lot of transactions every day and things are coming in the cash register. I think there's just some complexity to that as well. If you've watched all the way to the end, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and do let me know in the comments what other videos you would like to see. Thanks so much. Bye.